Welcome to Season 3 of The Breakdown, the official podcast of the Breakaway Roping Journal and CapRoping.com. This season, we're diving into both the breakaway and calf roping like never before, bringing you the personalities, successes, and horses that make these events great. You can expect training tips from the top ropers, stories from the road, and industry news that goes beyond the numbers. I'm Taylor Vollen, your calf roping host. And I'm Lillian Kent, your breakaway host. And this is The Breakdown. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Breakaway Breakdown. This is your host, Lillian, and we are going to dig into a fun interview with Shelby Medjid, recapping the end of the year and Sioux Falls for her. As many of you know, we have reached the end of the regular PRCA and WPRA season on September 30th, and now we know the 15 breakaway ropers that are headed to rope in Vegas at the NFBR. It was the tightest race we've ever seen this year, and the cutoff ended up being about 10 grand higher than it was last year. Not only that, but the top seven are also over $100,000 in earnings, which is absolutely insane, with Danielle Lohman and Ricky Feining in number eight and nine with $97,000 each. So I'm going to run through the list real quick, just get your bearings as far as who is going to Vegas before we dive into this interview with Shelby. Going to start at number 15 and work our way up. We're going from Jordan Joe Hollabaugh. Riley George, Tiata Gray, Haley Williams, Kendall Pearson, Macy Young, Ricky Fanning, Danielle Lohman, Maddie Dearman, Martha Angeloni, Taylor Munsell, Kelsey Domer, Jackie Crawford, Josie Connor, and finally Shelby Medjid. Now, I could have an entire episode just pointing out the high points of each of these ladies' seasons, but until then, I'm just going to give you a quick overview. We have Tiata Gray and Riley George heading to their first ever NFBRs. Tiata Gray had a fantastic last month. She rose from like, I want to say 20th in the standings. Now she's sitting at number 13. So she did a fantastic job. We had Maddie Dearman, who also held really strong throughout the year. She actually put off going to work at her like guaranteed job in the oil field to stay out here in rodeo with us. Moving up to Taylor Munsell. Taylor was super consistent throughout the summer and um, got that Reno rodeo win up to Kelsey Domer. Kelsey won the first round of Sioux Falls, which was an $11,000 payday. And then Jackie Crawford, of course, our early leader in the world standings race, won Rodeo Houston and led the way until about July or August, I believe. And then Josie Connor, of course, came from behind, overtook Miss Jackie. Uh, Josie riding Dutch, who, if you listen to our last episode, a ton of people think are is primed to be horse of the year. Uh, Josie and Dutch were super consistent. And then, like I said, last minute, Shelby Medjid overtook Josie with her Sioux Falls payday. Uh, Shelby took more than $30,000 home, which boosted her to $146,000. She was previously sitting fifth. So it was a big jump for Shelby, knocked Josie out of that top spot. But um, the top five or so are within... $18,000 $18,000 of each other and it's just going to be great watching once we show up in Vegas because those go rounds pay at least $5,000 to win them. There's 10 go rounds. It's going to be fantastic. Okay, we're about to dive in, but first I need to say a big thank you to Purina for sponsoring today's episode. A little later in the show, I'm going to tell you about Purina's really cool program called the Feed Finder where you can put in your horse's information and get the best Purina feed for your horse. But first, we're going to talk to Miss Shelby Medjid. It's time to rope. Let's go. Well, hello, Shelby. Thanks for taking some time after your busy weekend uh, to chat about Sioux Falls and the top 15. Thanks for having me. Perfect. Well, we'll jump right in. First of all, Um, kind of talk to me a little bit about the lead up to Sioux Falls, kind of tell me about your journey to get there and then kind of how you were feeling going in. Um, you know, I was a little bit stressed to even qualify for Sioux Falls. Like I said, I, I didn't really have a great year. I feel like I, um, I, uh, let a lot of really good opportunities slip this summer. So I think I ended up like maybe eighth or something to get into Sioux Falls. So, uh, after I got that deal sealed, I went home and uh, 
I guess after Albuquerque or after Pendleton, went straight home and practiced as hard as I could because I knew that Sioux Falls was going to be my last little kick at the cat for me to have a chance at a gold buckle. Yeah. And were you in Montana or did you go back home to Texas? I drove back home to Texas and practiced there for a week and then um, went to Mandan. And then after Mandan, I went to Montana and practiced for a couple more days before Sioux Falls. Okay. Okay. So tell me what that practice looks like for you. Were you on Anna? Were you on another horse? Um, there's a couple horses at the house that have a pretty good feel that's pretty realistic. So I practice on those horses and Anna and my other good mare root beer. And mm-hmm. then um, when I went to Montana, it was just Anna after Mandan. So I got some good practice sessions in there. Awesome. And are you, when you're doing those practice sessions, are you focusing on like catching every time or are you practicing on throwing fast? Because you won Sioux Falls with a one six, which is just absolutely crazy. Yeah. Um, my dad actually, I practiced just catching and making really sharp runs when I came back from Pendleton and then I roped at Mandan and my dad had drove to Montana to help me for a few days before Sioux Falls. My parents surprised me and, uh, my dad told me that uh, I need to get back to throwing on, on my second swing again and uh, not trying to use my horse so much and start, you know, trying to be a little bit more proactive up there, not just rely on on all the time. So uh, that's kind of all we practice after Mandan was just two swings and just getting a big, strong first swing and getting a lot more confidence and throwing on my second swing right there. Okay. Yeah. Because when you have a horse like Anna, it's probably really tempting to kind of set everything up perfectly. So you have that like gorgeous shot that's right there. Yeah. It's definitely tempting to go three swings on her. So, um, I guess it was, it was kind of hard to train myself and I'm definitely not confident in my two swing runs. So I had four days to get that way before (laughs) Sioux Falls. Mm -hmm. And I remember on your, uh, interview after your win, you gave your dad a shout out for coming out and helping you practice. Yeah, he deserved that. And he even messaged me after the first two rounds. I missed the barrier in the first round. It was a 3-3. And then I kind of missed the barrier a little bit again in the second round and ended up still being a 2-6. And he called me before the last day and pretty much told me to quit screwing around and hit the barrier and throw on my second swing. So, Okay. I I imagine that probably hit you pretty hard. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So it worked out really well. I'm glad. And I'm super grateful that he came and helped me. I wish he would have come down in June, but it worked out. You're like, dang it, dad. I could have used you all summer. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you were one nine, won the eight man, and then came back for the four man, uh, Kelsey, Tiata and Jackie, all super formidable ropers that, um, have had really successful past, you know, months here. It's like Tiata was on a heater. Kelsey won round one. Were you thinking anything different in that four man? No, I was just, um, I did say to Haven after the eight man was over, I said, I wish it could just be done right now. I didn't want to have to run another calf, but um, we had about an hour or so before we roped again in the four man round. So I had about an hour to talk myself into throwing on my second swing and getting it on in the four man round. So (laughs) that was, that was helpful that I had some time for that. I I bet that was a really intense, like mental battle that you had. Yeah, it was. Cause I mean, I can't even remember the last time I've thrown on my second swing. I'm, I'm pretty sure San Antonio, uh, the winter time was the last time that I even tried it. So I, uh, I definitely had to go rope the dummy a few times on my second swing and just get in the mindset and just tell myself that I can do this. Okay. Well, I coming from my perspective, I noticed that you rope the calf with a really, it looked like a big loop caught him around almost the chest. And then you drew your slack fast enough that, you know, everything worked out. Kind of talk me through that in like more technical terms, I guess you could say. Um, yeah, I didn't mean to rope the calf that deep. I really and truly thought that I tore the barrier down. So I, uh, I kind of just threw and I didn't try and stay at the front and finish my run or make anything like look nice. I just kind of chucked my rope at the calf really. And then I was truly shocked when I turned around and seen that I actually got out. I thought there was no way. Yeah. Well, thankfully you have enough experience that just chucking the rope at the calf is going to work out sometimes. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Um, was Anna like locked in on you throwing on your second throw or do you think she was a little surprised? Um, I think the first two go around, she was a little fresh and not paying attention. So, um, after the first two go around, when I got back to the trailer, um, I just loped her down a little bit and then, uh, loped her that afternoon before the runs just to get her a little bit more tired and zoned in. I didn't feel like she was like really focusing and that's not normally something I would ever do. I, I would just be like, you know, she's fine, but. I brushed it off all summer and I knew that there's a gold buckle on the line. So, uh, she got saddled in the afternoons and she got loped after the perf and I just did everything I could to keep her loped down, keep her in the zone. And I did everything that I could keep myself in the zone. Um, if it, if Sioux Falls didn't go my way, I mean, it's, it's crazy that that rodeo added so much money because I went from not having a chance at a gold buckle to being in contention. Totally. Yeah. And it's amazing too, that Anna was that fresh after the year, the summer of hauling. Yeah. That's one thing that I still just don't understand is how horses get so fresh. You would think they would get tired being hauled so much, but they definitely, she's one of them that definitely gets a little out of hand and <laughs> I always have to do a little bit more and lope her a little bit more. She gets a little fresh out there. Yeah. You're like, can you get just a little short on me, please? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break from today's episode to tell you about our sponsor, Purina. Confidently address your horse's unique weight needs and help optimize their overall well-being with research-proven Purina animal nutrition feeds designed by passionate equine nutritionists. Partner with Purina to nourish your horse to their optimal body condition. Explore weight management resources for your horse today at purinamills.com forward slash feed dash finder. Special thanks again to Purina for supporting today's episode of The Breakdown. <laughs> okay, so you kind of mentioned this, but like you said, you were battling all summer. You know, you said you didn't have the winner that you wanted then you didn't really have the summer that you wanted and you were fighting. We got to chat a little bit after Cheyenne and, um, I know that was like a really high spot for you. It hasn't been easy throughout the year. Have you had your eye on number one or have you just been taking it one day at a time? Um, I've definitely had my eye on number one and, um, I kind of feel like that's what got me a little bit was just really focusing on where I was at a little bit. But um, at the same time, really, um, I think that if it's your time to win, it's your time to win. And the, the only thing I did stay true to was I kept my head down and I try not to get too down on myself. I tried to stay really level headed. And I knew that if I worked hard and just stayed at it and stayed after it and kept a positive mindset that my time was going to come. And if my if my time didn't come, then I was I was going to be extremely grateful um, to be out there and super excited to watch the girls whose time it was to win. I absolutely love it. And like you said, it's hard because you need to be looking forward and hopeful and positive, but you also can't beat yourself up too much when it doesn't go your way. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's just kind of something we have to do out there is just stay ready. And sometimes it's not going to be your time and you got to be ready for when it is. So I think that's just kind of the name of the game. And it was just one of the it's a different summer for me because I've had summers where I've nothing's gone my way. Just kind of like this summer, I've had a lot of things not go my way and I dropped the ball on a lot of big opportunities. And, um, it, there's been summers like that. And then there's been summers where, you know, everything kind of went my way and it felt easy. So, um, I guess I was kind of proud of myself that I was able to turn this summer around and stay after it. And I think that's just kind of comes with the territory of being a little bit more mature and a little bit more seasoned and, more mature as a person and, a, and an athlete I knew that I could stay positive and it wasn't over until it was over and not let all those bad runs catch up to me and get me down absolutely there's something that our team was kind of talking about you know Casey Allen does the barrel racing stuff and we were watching San Bernardino and Poway to kind of see how the barrel racing was going to play out as far as the top 15 and even like in the breakaway watching Stephenville wrap up um it really was, it really struck me how it was coming down to one rodeo or two rodeos yeah. or how, how you ended up in 
a one header in California on the last weekend of the year. Yeah. I think it matters so much. I mean, I lost a world title by, I think under $2,000, um, I think in 21 or I don't, I don't even remember what you're 21. Yeah. And so, um, you know how important it is to make sure that you try and make every single rodeo count, whether the rodeo pays 2000 or 20000 And so um, I think that definitely has to motivate people when you don't feel like going to one more, you don't feel like making that drive. You got to make that drive because you could lose a gold buckle by that much. Mm -hmm. And Tiana Gray, you know, punched her ticket to the NFBR there at Sioux Falls, uh, had a fantastic rodeo, ended up with uh, $15,000 in that four man round. And then she was at Stephenville the next morning and ran one at Stephenville. Yeah. See, I, I think that says a lot about her character right there and how bad she wants it. And I'm extremely happy for Tiana. Yeah. Um, super awesome field, very tight. I was going through all the numbers. Uh, the top six y'all are separated by less than $18,000. Uh, and then it's just an absolute minefield. We got Jackie, we got Martha, you're in there. Josie's in there. She's having a fantastic year. Um, what are some of your thoughts about how close everything is there at the top right now? I think it's exciting. I feel like in a lot of the past years, it's, you know, the finals doesn't pay great. So I feel like if you go in there with like a $20,000 lead or anything close like that, then, um, you kind of have the gold buckle sealed up, really. It's hard to make up that kind of ground. And so I feel like this will be one of the first finals we've seen where there's more than two people or more than one person eligible for a gold buckle. And I think that there's going to be some drama at the NFR, and it's it's going to be really exciting and fun watching. I think this is going to be the best year yet for the breakaway roping. I agree. You guys are going to have me on my toes with the spreadsheets throughout the, <laughs> the NFBR. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um. Are you feeling a little nervous heading in with all those ladies? Or is at that point when you get there, you're like, my work is already done. All I need to do is go rope, be great, have fun, do my job. I think anybody would be lying to you if they told you they weren't nervous with Josie Connor, Jackie Crawford, um, Martha Angelone, Taylor Munsell. I mean, you're never safe with those girls behind you. You can, you can go make the best run that you can possibly make and they're going to beat you and they can beat you day in and day out. And so any given go round, it can be anybody's game. And so uh, definitely nervous, definitely unsettled, <laughs> definitely going to practice harder than I ever have for this. NFR. I know we're like, woo, it's the best it's ever been. And then we're like, oh, it's the best it's ever been. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, it'll be good. And I accidentally skipped Taylor, like you said, a second ago, and she has had a really great year. And I really feel like she's been the bridesmaid and not the bride throughout a lot of these rodeos, but she has been hanging right in there with everyone. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think all the girls have roped outstanding this year. And it's crazy to think that we're going in with the separation that we have. I mean, if you look at the guys, as long as they're within a hundred thousand dollar range they have a chance at a gold buckle so for these girls for all of us to go in like that close to where with our payout we still have a chance through six it's it's crazy mm -hmm. it's gonna be really cool mm -hmm. so uh we kind of mentioned that top little group and then i have uh maddie dearman danny loman ricky fanny macy young kendall pearson Haley williams tiana gray riley george and jordan joe uh rounding out the top 15 is there anybody in that list that really stands out to you as far as you know they really stepped up their game this year or just kind of like a, a special memory that you had with them on the road you know uh I think they're all they're all super great ropers I guess the one person that stands out to me is my little Kendall my traveling partner uh I guess Sioux Falls is Sioux Falls was pretty exciting watching her win that go round and seal the deal because she definitely wasn't safe. So I was super proud of her. And she drove to Montana with me to practice. We drove eight hours out of the way to go and practice and make sure that we were sharp for that. So I was super happy to watch that pay off for her. Yes, she's definitely put in the hours and I really enjoy watching her and smoke work together. I feel like I need to get to know that horse a little better because he seems super interesting. He, he really is just an old teddy bear. He's the slowest horse you've ever seen back off a trailer and he just hangs out. Oh, that sounds amazing. I love that. <laughs> yeah. And we need to give a little shout out to Brady as well. I know she 
didn't have Sioux Falls go the way she wanted, but uh, she was there cheering for you the entire time regardless. Yeah, that's actually what I was going to bring up next is I'm super proud of Kendall, but um, I think that what Brady did at Sioux Falls speaks higher volumes than what anybody can do in the arena with a rope in their hand. I think that at the end of the day, what matters the most is what kind of person you are and how you help others and how you love others. And I think that Brady, Brady and her whole family at Sioux Falls, I have a whole new respect for all of them. Brady's always been one of my best friends, but I just, I think the world of her now, because that was probably one of the hardest nights of her life um, and her career and falling short. And uh, she literally, she literally shook it off and was cheering for me like nothing happened. You, you never seen an ounce of anything on her face or anything in her demeanor that she was upset and uh, her family was there cheering for me. They went to the award ceremony with me after like, just a true genuine winner really and I think that just because of that Brady's gonna go really far and they better watch out for her vengeance I was gonna say yeah and we had um Sarah Angeloni miss out um Brady as we mentioned so there are some girls that are going to be looking for a little bit of redemption in 2025 yeah for sure definitely hopefully at that Kimes Ranch thing too um I'm hoping Brady gets into that I hope she gets them for a lot of money in that deal she deserves it so tell me what your plans are between now and when you head out for the Kimes Ranch thing in Scottsdale and then obviously up north to Vegas um I'm gonna just kind of try and stay on good horses and try to go to jackpots and try and minimize the young horses I ride and um, I guess just just practice and try and stay sharp Okay, so you're not going to be in trainer mode between now and Vegas because you just want to stay in like really sharp rodeo mode? We're definitely going to try and minimize riding so many fraternity horses and we've talked about it already and we told each other to hold each other accountable and make our good horses priority and definitely make sure we set aside a practice time at the end of every day and make sure that we're having a practice for ourselves and not just giving all of our time to those young horses. Okay. Yeah. Because you and Haven, I mean, both headed back to Vegas and let's talk about side note. Let's talk about the, um, match thing that's going to be going on with Josie and Riley and you and Haven in Oklahoma here in a few weeks. Yeah. We're already joking about that match. We said, it's definitely not going to be Shelby against Josie and Haven against Riley. It's Shelby and Haven against Riley and Josie. So we're going to tally it probably as a, as a team's, (laughs) have a okay. little side bet yeah it's gonna be super interesting i can't wait to see how it all plays out okay well best of luck and um hopefully you can get in the groove of prioritizing practice time for yourself i know it's really tempting when you get home and you have all those really cool young horses sitting in their pastures so <laughs> yeah for sure okay sure, for sure. well drive safe and we will catch you next time all right thank you uh-huh. bye All right, guys, thanks for tuning in to today's episode of the Breakaway Breakdown and listening to Miss Shelby Medjid and a little bit about her journey in the last few days of the season. Thanks again to Purina for their support of today's episode. And remember, you can learn more about which Purina feed is best for your horse using their feed finder program. Just go to purinamills.com slash feed dash finder. We will catch you guys next time on the Breakaway Breakdown.